Good morning. We're in those few minutes here before the sun hits our street. So we're in shade, but it's going to be a blaster. <laughs> I like the conversation here. Everybody's one-upping the weather. So we're not the worst, but of course we're not the worst. It's just normal summer weather. I can't claim in any way that this is, oh my God, it's the end of the world. This is just normal summer weather. It's a bit hot a bit earlier than it normally is, I think. It sort of doesn't usually get this roasting until the summer really gets going, is my memory. But uh, but I can't complain. This is normal summer weather. The reason it's not so much fun for me is because I'm stuck downtown here, of course, you know. Stuck, I don't know if I could arrange my life differently. Okay, okay, morning to everybody. It's going to be a mixed bag today, a real mixed bag. We'll be changing up and changing up the, the work segment of this thing in the middle. I'll be still removing some of that muda body. And that block is here somewhere underneath this pile. <laughs> that block is here. Ayumi-san uh, took it back. She needed to do more testing. She was here Friday, I guess, after the after Friday? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over, over. She was here over the weekend to do more testing. And she did so, even though I had just partially removed some of this stuff. You can see the zones where I took it off. And she's going to be back, not today, she'll be back tomorrow for more testing. And actually, we want to get this thing up and running now, so I have got to get busy and get rid of these lanterns. So this will be my work segment of today's stream. Before I get to that, I gotta clean up this stuff on the desk. And the show and tell too will be a mixed bag. I wanna do a recap from yesterday's bath. We've got the stuff that I bathed yesterday. We'll show that. There's another envelope of these damn things that has shown up. Oh, somebody stole my stool. also fun. We'll look at this at the show and tell as well. Looks pretty, doesn't it? Huh. From the printers. More from the printers. You've seen this one before. This is not new. A bit too bright here. Well, I know, it's because the camera was set for the light for the upstairs. Hang on a sec. We've seen this before. This is not new at all. I, I made this myself back in 2000 and something, and it's now being reproduced by the, by the Mocha Hong Kong printers. This is, uh, it's a mixed bag. It has lots of techniques. It has... Uh, Umo mica powder on the wings and it has gold, scattered gold flakes all over the background. And we have web pages on how to do these, both of them. It's another batch. Who did this? Uh, Dei -chan. Dei -chan. So I don't think anybody's been waiting for this, but if anybody has, it's now done. And it will go to Ome for packing. Yeah, cheap thrills to put that gold on. It's easy to do. Cheap thrills. What's this? All stuff that I have to check. All these prints that the printers finish, they dump them on my desk. They come to me. I've got to check each one. There's nobody else here to do that job. This is the ongoing printing of this year's series again. Look at this. This is the March print from this year's series. This is another batch coming through. This is Ishikawa-san, and she asked me if she could change the tint on the water, and I said, go ahead, make it look like what you think looks nice. Consistent, 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 another hundred, she doesn't say, another hundred or so copies. All have to be checked and trimmed. Hold on my desk. 
What's this? This is from Chiharu-san, one of our printers. This is not show and tell stuff. This is the same thing. It's prints coming back from our printers, waiting to be checked and approved. We have now 10, 10 printers working for us, basically, basically full time. Someone say they're all done by machine. Yeah, come on over and visit. Come on over and visit. Visit our machine shop upstairs. <laughs> so. Oh, I remember this. Yes, 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 yes. It's the last we've been going through a reprinting of all 17 of the Ukiwe heroes. Jetsan cleaned us out last. Uh, last gift season, last Christmas, last November or so, he had the heroes, I think he might have put them on sale, I don't remember. He pretty much cleaned us out. So starting in uh, late last year, it was December, I guess, we started, as we had time for it, we started assigning these heroes prints to our crew, one by one by one. One by one by one. And now this is the 17th one. We have reprinted all the heroes. They are all back in stock in beautiful, new, bright color. Well, no, they're exactly the same as the previous ones, but whatever. So one week to the hero's anniversary. We've talked about this. The show, we're gonna have a, an AMA. I think it should be fun. As long as we don't have any trouble with Skype. We're gonna do some rehearsals to make sure we get the technical side of it. Look at this, look at this. These are damp, Chihadu-san. I get this from her every summer. The prints she sends are still damp, and this is an emergency. I have to get these upstairs into the drying boards. I always ask her, look, you can see, see the ripples, look, look, look. The piece of paper she put in here has rippled from the moisture. She and I have a little miniature fight about this every time we get these prints and stuff. She says, that's all I can do, it's damp up here. And I'm like, it's not damp up there, you live in the mountains, <laughs> whatever. This one is beautiful, this is so this is so cool. I love this. This is one of the original seven Heroes prints, the ones that we published during the original Kickstarter campaign. And this is so beautiful. I am so proud of this stuff. I'm sorry, this is a recording. This is a recording. I am so proud of this. These are so cool. Yeah, it's some video game, but it doesn't matter what some video game is. It's a small pink round object that eats stuff. Our name for it is Soul Eater. Jed's picked up traditional kimono patterns. Look at what she's done on this background. First, I know, a light gradation from the bottom up in the sort of a peach vermilion color. And then the main sky top down. The white circles you see here are the paper showing through. And to print this deep and rich enough on the background without filling those circles. And the color tone between the, the dark of the monster and the black sky. This is a masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. A hundred years now, two hundred years now, people are going to be, oh my God, how could they do that? Jed home run, Dave's carving home run, and Chiharu-san's printing home run. My name is on this one. I cut this one. I can sit here all day and look at this. <laughs> Relax, we won't. 
who made that print? I made this print. We made this print. Jed Henry designed it. It's a spoof on the character called Kirby in the Nintendo you know, universe. And this is a woodblock print of it. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. <sighs> Masterpiece. But they've got to be dried more carefully today. As soon as this stream is over, I said I was going to get a cup of coffee. He said to go upstairs. I don't sell that print. If you're interested in the print, somebody can put a link in. It's available on Jed Henry's website. It's Ukiyoe Heroes, all one word, ukiyoeheroes.com. Look for the woodblock prints. They're over there. I don't sell these. We're just the factory. We make these things. Jed is the publisher. Yeah, someone's got it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the links. Get some work done. Excuse me. Just where we left off. Now we got to sort out again what to do with the camera because we have a dark piece of wood here. We have to decide how to set the settings on the camera. Let's give it a try. I think we found a good setting last time. Not sure if anybody remembers what it is. somewhere on there let's see no, we can't see the wood no okay let's try again Hang on, just a sec okay let's see how this goes someone's asking me am I familiar with Tom Mortensen's print work no I'm sorry I've never heard I don't think I've heard the name I don't know I'm sorry How's mom doing? As far as I know, I don't get an update every day from the family because, you know, things have settled down. Mom, I believe, is getting used to her life in the home. Now that the weather is, uh, before this spring it was rainy, rainy, rainy. They had lots of trouble. They couldn't get her outside. And now probably it's too hot. They can't get her outside. I don't know. My brother is there. He's taken over from me as far as the daily duties of taking care of mom, though. And she's in, a, she's in a comfortable little nursing home. Not uh, really active with the computer these days, I'm sorry. So she can't uh, really participate in the stream these days anymore. Dealing with a mouse and a keyboard is, uh, is, is more than she can actually uh, take care of these days. I guess we have to go through the explaining again. Is there a bot command for this? I don't really know. The explanation of what's going on here today. We are adapting a block that has previously been carved and quote finished unquote. 
there were lines on it that were uh, that are wasted lines. We don't need them in the finished print, but they needed to be on the block so that we could figure out the color zones. And that's what's happening now is I've got to now remove these lines that are no longer needed. It is wasteful. It's wasteful work and there could have been other ways to do this. But we followed, I followed the traditional pattern to do this because we know it works, it works well. But yes, there is a wasted step here and that's what we're dealing with now. too is that we weren't really sure until we started the test printing whether or not this step should be done or not. We thought we might need these black lines. It has turned out we don't. So these lines are now coming off. It's been confirmed that we don't need them on the print and they're now coming off. So I have a bunch of notes in my file here that said uh, once we get going on the stream here there's a few things we can chat about. <laughs> and, uh, one, of them, <laughs> one of them is funny, although I got an email a few days ago from uh, one of the stream watchers saying, Dave, high alert, there's a Yahoo auction coming up that you are probably really, really, really going to be interested in. And uh, I was interested in looking at it and following it. I knew as soon as I saw it that I would not be bidding on that object that I would not be winning it, but it's a Yahoo auction that came up, which is really, really fun. A very, very, very rare set of wood blocks came up the other day. And the first one you see it, let me, let me find the auction listing so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Hang on a sec. Here's the auction. It's a set of wood blocks. I don't remember who, who sent it to me. I don't remember the name. I'm sorry. I can't remember names and handle names and getting them all matched up. I'm sorry. I am on the laptop microphone. Yes, indeed. It's clear and clean. The sound you're hearing from me right now is the laptop mic. So if I type, you hear it. General Zimmer, it was me. Thank you, sir. Anyway, I, I was already following that thing. We looked at it. And as you see, last night we watched it. And uh, there's no way I would be able to have bid on that. It was a set of blocks which looks like it could actually be back from the real old, old, old days. I think probably what it is is a Meiji era reproduction of the print, but I don't know. I have absolutely no way to tell that or to verify or to know what it is. The wood to me doesn't seem to be old enough for a uh, to be the original version of that print, but don't quote me because I don't know. There is a way to tell is whoever's got those wood blocks now, if he gets, uh, takes some, a few test prints from them and compares that with known museum copies of the print, then you can maybe get some information on that, but I have no access to that information. So, But I knew they would start climbing and indeed they did. So. So I wasn't expecting in any way to be able to buy that stuff. There's also a lot of things that can be gleaned from that block set because it's been changed and modified as time goes by. 
that block set. There's parts of it that are cut off, parts of it that are adjusted, amended. There's lots of things to learn from those pieces of wood there. Also, if you're looking at that block set, the pictures on the auction, there is very, very interesting. If you scroll down the page and look at the picture of the key block, there is a bunch of close-up pictures of the key block. And you can clearly see where there is a boxwood inlay around the face of the lady there. I should have prepared some, some pictures of this, I'm sorry. I don't have it ready in front of me right now, but on that auction page that I linked, you scroll down, 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 down. There's the key block with the carving of the woman's head, and you can see clearly there's a square zone that has been inlaid there. And that's a boxwood inlay of exactly the same type of process that you saw me do on my last video. And that wouldn't have been done by the carver himself. That would have been done by the company that makes the wood blocks for them. The publisher knew what they needed and when he ordered the wood block he would have said we need an insert of boxwood at X, Y and a certain width. He would have given them coordinates and a size and the block company, the company that prepares blank wood blocks, would have put the boxwood inlay at that particular place ready for, ready for the carver. I remember back in the 1980s, or 1990s, trying to get that ordered from Shimano-san, like the family who made my woodblocks when I was making the Poets series. As I got towards the end of the Poets, starting Surimono, I realized I needed more density on the wood. I asked them if they would do some boxwood inlay. They didn't, they didn't laugh at me in, in a bad way, but they laughed at me. They said, you got to be kidding. You know, just, the young Shimano-san had never done it, and his father, I, I don't remember what he said, the, the gist was he had never done it for a long, long, long time, and it wasn't about to start now. So I had to do it myself. It's not clear what we're doing. We're leaving the black lines here. We're taking out the shapes of each lantern because we want the lanterns to glow with the light. We don't need the black part. They don't need black outlines. The lanterns will just hang in the sky glowing without a black outline. But we do need to keep the top and bottom of each lantern like the one you see behind my head. It has a black lacquered base section and a top section so we keep those but the outlines of a lantern have to come out there is there's a food in next door I know it's a little metal one which is a bit I I like the glass ones they're okay they've got a sort of a gentle sound but the guys on the oyster shack next door, they have hung outside a little metal furin. And it's, it's you're here hearing occasionally ringing in the background. And sometimes at night, it's kind of a little bit annoying, but uh, can't be helped.
We're going to leave the, uh, the wires. There's horizontal wires here, and they're the lines that suspend the lanterns. So we're going to leave those. It makes sense to have those across the print. But each, each lantern doesn't need a big heavy black line. There's a slight bit of other news. Well, it's what I'm going to say next sounds a bit like a tease. I'm sorry, it's not a tease. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday was Sunday. It was really, really, really busy here in Asaksa, and the ninja people across the street were uh, were going nuts. And they've actually they've changed their approach a little bit to this now because their business is expanding and they're doing really quite well. The ninja guys across the street, and on Saturday, Sunday, Monday holidays, they are crazy busy, and they are now getting to the point where it seems like they're overbooked. So they've, uh, they've switched out their plan. They now have really tight scheduling on their parties. And the, the ninja parties last now two hours exactly, and they start at 10, 12, 2, and 4. And it used to be a bit sort of easy going. They would start it when people showed up and stuff like that. But now it is very rigorously done and programmed. And the little theater thing that they do at the end of each ninja stream now is they've really got it scripted tight, tight, tight. And we here now, here in Mokohankan, we can now set our watches four times a day by the certain things they shout. They do their little script and they do their talking. Some of it's quiet and some of it is really shouted loudly. And we hear this now. We hear this shout loudly. He talks about remembering my mother. It's a particular phrase that comes up in the drama because he's stolen a, a hair ornament and he's trying to pretend that it's his. And they say, that's not yours, that's, that's, from, that's not a man's stuff. And he puts it in his hair and he yells, I need to remember my mother. He's just desperately trying to flounder around because he's stolen this purse, you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, the point being, this happens at two hours, two hours, two hours. It happens at 1.43, not five minutes later, not five minutes earlier. We hear, i got to remember my mother. And we look up at the clock and it's either 11.43, 1.43, 3.43 or 5.43 because <laughs> this theater rolls along, rolls along, rolls along in two hour, uh, at two hour intervals. <laughs> so, and it's become, it's become a real routine. It's funny. I don't know the guys there. It's like, I guess when you're, when you're starring in a Broadway show, you know, you have to get up there every evening and you got to do the same thing, you know, every day, every, at the same time. I guess you, you want to be the star, you want to do your thing, but after you've done it for a while, like, I don't want to be doing this anymore, <laughs> so I don't know. And these guys do this thing, and now it's, it's just timed, absolutely timed. Then the next thing they do is a, a minute or so after the, the thing where he's yelling, it's from my mother's memory. They're challenging him, no, it's not, you're stolen this, you're a bad guy, you know, and he fights back, and he actually fights back with a plastic knife and pretends to stab the hero, the ninja teacher, and the ninja hero clutches his side and falls to the sidewalk. That's it, guys, it might be it for me. I'm going to need your help. <laughs> He's got these, these three, four little kids, you saw them in the video, they're just this tall. <laughs> And he's pretending to sort of die on the sidewalk and the little kids are just... <laughs> and sometimes the kids get like, oh my God, you know. And it goes on and it goes on and they say their magic words and the, the guy falls back. He loses his power and gets captured. Then he does the thing I said where he says, oh, look over there. And the little kids all look over there. He runs the other way. And that's what happens when you saw the part of the video here. He runs along the sidewalk away from the kids and he knows now don't do this in front of the bag lady's place 
he runs past the bag lady and he gets to exactly in front of here in front of the hotel where they don't care. <laughs> then he falls down, the kids jump on him and they attack him again with their little plastic swords and, and he contritely gets carried back to back to jail, you know. <laughs> and then and then at the end, he, one of the good guys goes up to the roof and wrap, uh, rappels down and, uh, and the kids say goodbye and go home. And then in the weekends, when the last party is over, the last party starts, at, as I said, 4 o'clock, finishes up just at 6 o'clock, then the ninja guys switch up their spiel. It's no longer dealing with little kids. They now have a shop open in Asakusa full of lots of young people, lots of couples walking by. There's no more little kids. The little kids have gone home now at six in the evening, Saturday night, Sunday night. It's a different kind of clientele. So no more little ninja games. What they do is they know that the people walking by, there's lots of couples, guy and a girl, walking, walking. They've been for a drink. They're on their way to get a drink, whatever. So they've got a carny spiel that has started. This is new to them. They've got some what are called karo, kawara, you know, roof tiles. And they've got a stand set up and some roof tiles, what look like roof tiles outside. And they start pitching to the couples that are going by, hey guy, hey, 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 you're strong, right? Show your girl how many tiles you can break. You know, and they've got a carny pitch trying to get these guys to say something and then and, and show their girlfriend how... Uh, how many tiles they can break at the same time. <laughs> this goes on from like after the last kids event is over at six, it goes on until about eight or so when they give it up. And they're selling two products here. One is they're selling the, the tile breaking event. And the second is they're saying, hey, come on, let's go up to the roof and you too can be a ninja and climb down from the roof. And that's pretty rare that customers do that, but they do do it. And yesterday, two guys bit. And I was upstairs working on my computer in my room, and I heard the commotion outside. I got my camera, and I, I don't have it right now. It's on the it's on the telephone for the shop. I'm going to scoop it in later. I'll show it to you next time or something. And they took two customers up there to the top, and they threw them over the edge. <laughs> they put them over the edge of the building, and the guy walked down the wall. These are customers who have just come out of one of Tokyo's famous bar streets. I don't know how drunk they were. I don't know. Just whatever. So I've got it on video. I didn't get the first one because I wasn't hip to what was happening. But then I heard the screaming and the yelling outside. So I grabbed the, uh, I grabbed the shop telephone, which was on the desk, and quickly took some telephone video. And we'll have a look at it uh, next time. If somebody reminds me, send me an email to remind me and I can uh, try and get it ready for next time. business model is that, you know, grabbing drunks, taking them up to the roof and having them climb over the railing and walk down the wall, you know. So you can see how it goes. You can see the idea here. You can see from the parts that aren't done. There's the, the image has a, it's a festival ground and there's wires suspended above everybody's heads with the lanterns. So we want to keep the wires. We want to keep the lantern ends, but we don't want the middle part of each lantern. So 
It's work that's got to get done. Sorry, not so exciting, but it's got to get done. I say throw them off the building. I mean, they're, they're not stupid here. What they do is everybody's got a belt. There's a harness with a, with a big ring at the front of it. So the kid, the kid puts the belt on over his shoulders and around his waist. And then the rope goes through the ring. So nobody's going to fall onto the ground directly. They, I mean, these guys aren't that stupid. So the customers, the rope goes through the ring. Then the customer climbs over the balcony. And he and the, the teacher, they stand outside the balcony rail, facing the building with their back to the street. And then they do it step by step. They walk down the building. You know, they lean back and they've got their rope, and they walk backwards down the front of the building. And you know, there's this rope that goes through the ring. So I guess it's safe in that sense that they're not going to fall all the way to the floor. But the crazy part is these two ropes are just on the. They're just tied to the balcony rail, and it's a wrought iron balcony. And as they, these two guys are doing this, I can see the balcony rail going. Rrr, as the two guys bounce their way down the wall. And that's where I think this is dangerous. That balcony rail, it's wrought iron. It could just pop off. Down it goes. The strings come off, and there you are. Is it abseiling? I don't know what the word is. Rappelling? Abseiling? I don't know. They've got a, a thing with a ring. The rope goes through the ring, and they walk backwards, and they sort of let go of the string little bit by little bit, feeding the string, the rope out, as they walk backwards down the roof, down the wall. So I don't know the correct terminology here, I'm sorry. And I, I say drunk, I'm using the word loosely. The, the kids that were doing it last night, they were pretty happy little boys, but I don't think they were, you know, falling down drunk. The guys who do this activity are not going to be that stupid to do that. That rail could break, yeah, absolutely. This is the thing. I have not talked to these guys about it because I do not want to be in any way, any way, any way liable or any part of this. They seem to think they know what they're doing, but whatever. Well, I was a little bit leery last night. I said I got the camera out and did this, and I'm a little bit mixed feelings. I mean, I don't want to be the guy here with a camera filming somebody's death. You know, that's not the idea here. I'd like to sort of catch this event and show people but it does feel a bit, uh, what's the word? It feels a bit like ambulance chasing or something. Here I am waiting for someone to die, you know. If that rope did break and down this guy went, well, I guess I had evidence for the police, I guess. I don't know if I have a camera shot of it. That's not something I would be putting on my website, clearly. Like half of me yesterday was saying, I don't really want to watch. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be seeing this. And the other half of me saying, look, it's footage. Just show the people on the stream. You know, it's cool. It's ha, ha, ha. This is what's going on in the sock side. Anyway, I shot it, and there was no disaster, so we're OK. We're not going to watch a snuff video next time. <laughs> Oh, this print that we're talking about is this on a Bono Dodi print. This is Zenkoji Temple, the, the summer dance festival. And the Jed designed this for us actually. It would be three, perhaps four years ago. It's been in our production, backed up and delayed for such a long time. Jed had basically almost pretty much forgotten about it. But this time I, I got it going, woke it up, put it into our newsletter. 
and uh, there's been a lot of interest. I, I put in the newsletter that, hey, let me know if you want to hear when this is up and running again. And uh, lots of people, I mean dozens of people, wrote to us and said, hey, let me know when it's back up. So I, just, I, I told Jed this. I wrote to Jed and said, look, it seems that there's really lots of interest in this. I know it's taken me a long time to get it going, but let's start another one. And I gave him another sort of mandate for starting another Shin Hunger print for us. And he was, uh, he's cool with this idea. He said, yeah, sure, let's do this. So it won't be another festival, Bono Dodi print like this, but Jed is going to work on the next one, the next Shin Hunger reproduction. We're going to do some more. It makes no sense just to do reproductions of old stuff, you know? It makes no sense just to do reproductions, so as long as we get some new stuff going on. That spiral is in my series of, it's called The Arts of Japan. It's on the woodblock.com website, not the Mokohankan site. It's an experiment print I made by myself. It was carved. If you want to see it, go to the woodblock.com slash arts website and you'll find it there. It's the seventh print in the series, I think. I don't remember. My current subscription series. <coughs> fun to do. Back when I was a printmaker, that was fun. Oh, someone's got it. Kantar's got it. Thank you very much. Am I getting ash from Sakurajima? That's a million miles away. I've got no idea. The volcano yesterday, I've got no idea the number. It's like, you know, it's like New York to Florida. It's not nearby at all. This is the other end of the country here. No, 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 no. The people in the city nearby, uh, Kabushima City is nearby. So th those people have like an ash issue and stuff like that. But they live there. They know this goes on. Here in Tokyo, no, 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 that's the other end of the world. What is the distance from Tokyo to that volcano? I said New York to Florida. It's something like that, I think. I don't know the exact distance. Someone could check this, but uh, no, no, nothing to do with us. Yeah, Kawashima, this is, this is, I know, this is a thing for them, but they know this is regular. This is not a volcano that's been quiescent for hundreds of years. This volcano is a real thing. They live with it. But for us here in Tokyo, it's nothing to do with us at all.
the volcano of course that people in Tokyo think about and uh, the authorities are warning us sort of all the time is Mount Fuji. It does blow now and then. It hasn't blown in, in modern times. I think the last big blow it has was, was 1710 or 1714, something like that. And it was a big deal. And if it blows again, it's going to be big trouble for Tokyo, of course. Uh, the, the ash sits on top of electrical wires and it basically destroys the entire electrical system. So that's the one that we really get warned about and drilled about and uh, talked about here in Tokyo. When the big one blows. And it will. Uh, 1700s was the last one. And that, that eruption in the 1700s, 17, I say 1710 or 1714, it was enough to actually change the shape of the mountain. We've got this idea that Mount Fuji is an iconic, perfectly perfect cone, blah, 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 blah. But the eruption in the early 1700s changed that. And now from many angles, Fuji does look like a cone, but there are some angles now where it doesn't because of that eruption popped a big bump on the side of it. And Fuji is no longer a perfect cone from, from all any different directions. There's a big bump on the side that came from that, uh, that eruption in the 1700s. There's a name for it I'm supposed to remember, but I don't remember. I was talking about his dreams I see there and I really I'm sorry I'm delinquent here I haven't yet looked into that I haven't yet Kantar can you drop me an email with the link so that I can pop in and see what's going on <laughs> I suppose I know the URL already, twitch.tv. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. It must be twitch.tv slash contact, huh? I suppose. How's our time? What are we doing today? 8.49, okay. I would have still been in Vancouver when St. Helens blew. I don't even remember. When was that? I don't have any idea. I came to Japan in 1986, but before that I was living in Toronto for a bunch of years. I don't even remember. I'm sorry, I have no memory of the event in, in real life there back in North America. When did it blow? Are we talking 1980s, 1970s? I honestly don't remember. Early 80s. If it was early 80s, I would have been in Vancouver. I was in Vancouver from 1980 to 86. So yeah, March 27, 1980. I could have been in Toronto still. When did I come from Toronto to Vancouver? Seven? No, no, I was in Vancouver. Yeah, I was in Vancouver. We must have just, in fact, yeah, we must have just got back from, from a trip to Japan. We were in a trip to Japan from November 79 to February 1980. We must have just got back.
And honestly, I don't even remember it. I'm sorry. It's quite possible at the time, you know, that, that the normal news reports didn't really com comprehend how just big and vast that was. Volcano blows in America, you know, just, it might have just been sort of a bit of news. I don't know if it was really, I certainly didn't have any comprehension of what a vast thing had actually happened to. You know. Oh, there is something else I was supposed to link about. Yes, some friends in Osaka asked me to mention something on the channel here. Sponsored by it. So, 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 so. If you watched NHK programs I did years and years and years ago, I used to do the Japan Journey, Journeys in Japan program. And one of the ones I did there, I went to Osaka. They took me to Osaka one day. They took me to Osaka and we visited as part of the trip to Osaka. It was supposed to be visiting art places. They took me to a little tiny place called the Kamigata Ukiyoe Museum. Kamigata is the old word for the Kansai district, the Kansai area. But Kamigata in the world of Ukiyoe prints means a very specific style of prints. Prints that were made in, in Naniwa, the old Osaka. And they all featured uh, actors and kabuki actors. And there's a dear little old lady in Osaka, who has a building, and she inherited a collection of uh, woodblock prints, and she, she sits there and runs this place. And her grandson, starting a couple of months ago, totally unknown to me, her grandson started up a YouTube channel to sort of help his grandma with her business. That's the link I just posted in there. And he is trying to get the YouTube channel up and running with, with his grandma. He, points the camera to his grandma and asks her to talk about your prints and she does and he puts the things up on YouTube and they are trying to to build a, a following and to explain stuff. He came here a few weeks ago and said I need your help like nothing's happening we've got this YouTube channel and it's just sort of not really going anywhere and what's going on and I chatted with him I looked at this and I looked at that and he was his number one thing was we're getting views in Japan but nobody overseas is seeing what we're doing at all why what's wrong? Well, the easy answer was because the titles of all the videos were in Japanese, and that's not going to work when you have a YouTube channel that you want Westerners to look at, and all the titles are in Japanese. That's sort of strike one. Anyway, we chat about this. They are really nice people. I'm linking the channel here. These are not high... Whatever, they're trying. There are some people trying to learn how to do this. <laughs> they're having fun doing it, and they've got some interesting prints. The way they present them and the way they do the YouTube channel is kind of a little bit clunky and funky and homemade. But anyway, it's okay if you're curious and about this. So it's cute. Somebody's saying it's cute. They are really, really, really nice people. And the the the, the lady Takano-san, she must be. She's way, way, way older than me. I'm seventy, and she's way, 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 way older than me. But they're really nice people. And the grandson came here, and we chatted a while, and he said, "Can I? Can I?" interview you for our channel and I'm like yeah sure it's okay let's just uh, no, let's do this so and I, and I said once you're up and running and once you've got that little interview on your site I'll mention it on our twitch channel and maybe some of our people will be interested uh, in going over there and maybe subscribing we'll see 
So there you have it. Uh, it's not going to, it's not a huge educational resource, but it is interesting. You know. When I was chatting with him about how I thought the channel could maybe do the presentations a little differently, the one thing I really had to say to him was that uh, your, your grandmother knows this stuff, but the talks there are a little bit too much like lectures and they're a little bit too much filled with long words that nobody understands and nobody will remember. Don't lecture so much, just talk about it. Try and catch her enthusiasm. Rather than let her lecture to the camera, maybe you, the grandson, could sit down next to her on camera and not do an interview, but do these things as a QA rather than grandma talking to the camera with the big long words that nobody will remember, you know. So I tried to give him some advice on how they might make this a bit more user-friendly. So we'll see, you know, I, I can't run their channel for, for them, what at all. But uh, anyway, there it is. <clears throat> and if you open their channel and you see a bunch of uh, Japanese text, don't panic, because he has now started. <clears throat> the, the last half a dozen videos of his are, are done with Western titles, English titles. Ayana-san, good morning. morning. Another week begins. How are you doing? Yeah, I just saw something gross. Hontoni gross. Do we I need to hear about this in public? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, and nobody wants to hear it. It's just like, so gross. So like, it's just a bit Like outside our shop, you mean? What, what do you mean? Uh, on the street. I was like, you mean something we need I to clean up? Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't say it. <coughs> I just shouldn't say it here. Well, if you're talking about it's a bar night and somebody last night got sick, I mean, we see this all the time. Is that what you're sort of talking about? It's even worse. It's worse. Even okay. Worse. Yeah. Do we need to be involved cleaning something up? No, no, no. no. It's okay. kind of far from here. Okay. I don't know. Either do we need to clean up or do we need to call the police? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I need. We need to call someone because she's just so gross. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> she's not going to tell us, so we're going to leave it like that. I'll find out what this is afterwards. You know. I don't think it's a dead body. No, but something close. A dead animal. I see. Okay. It's inside of the creature. Oh, okay. Whatever. Well, stuff happens at night. You know, the tanuki or the crows. They will. Uh, you know, stuff like that happens. If it was like that, I would be okay. I would accept it. It's just like something that I have never seen on the street. Oh, I get it. It's a cat got hit by a car and it's squashed and the insides are outside. Or something like this. I, I, I see that too. I see that too. <laughs> Russian <laughs> dog, cat, and dogs and I don't stuff. know. I don't know. I don't know. Hi. Hey, yeah, I understand. Look at that. You know what's going on there? Come here. Nariska. Come here. Look at this. Look at this. Tell us, tell us, tell us. We need to know. Tell us, tell us. It's, now that you, now that you've come this far, <laughs> she's got herself uh, into a jam. It's a gigantic organ, like organ itself, was on the street. Well, it's not a human we're talking about. I'm not sure what kind of organ it is. It's, it's maybe from a cow. It's maybe from a human. It's just organ, gigantic, gigantic organ. Okay, so it's part of the garbage. The, somebody has put somebody from one of the restaurants there has put garbage outside because you can hear the garbage trucks coming. Mm -hmm. And the crows, during the night, they've grabbed this thing. This it's happens. Big chunk. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It's a big chunk. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's they said, I said, it's brains. It's the zombie apocalypse. Oh, I, <laughs> I glanced at it, and I was like, oh, OK, I shouldn't, I shouldn't look at it anymore. <laughs> like, I almost threw up. <laughs> you know as much as I do, whatever. So, so. OK, 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 OK. I think, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and so begins another week at Mokohanka. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go upstairs. No uh, okay. boxes from home. You are one busy lady today, right? Yes, no, no, I think so. We put that thing out early Saturday morning, it's and so there are it? tons of orders. One request, take it slow. Don't rush through this. You know, you're not going to finish it all today. Don't worry. Okay. They've waited for the weekend. They can wait one more day. Start at the beginning. Answer carefully, slowly, double check each one before you go. Okay. Just please, no rush. You know, mm -hmm. Her inbox is full, massively full. The, the mailing we did on Friday, it hasn't, like there's not a, a hundreds of orders, but there are many, 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 many dozens of orders. 
And the thing I know, because I've been there before, got to get through this, got to get through this. And it's prime time for mistakes. So take, take it your slow. time. And if you're in that list, you can wait. She will get to it in turn. In Did turn. you reply to like, some of the new subscribers over the, over the weekend? No? I didn't reply to anybody. Okay, okay. What I do is, you'll see, I looked in the inbox. I wanted to talk to Jed. People who are, on a, they're asking about the Bono print. print yeah. So I haven't talked to them, but what I did was I simply, I looked at the information so I could talk to Jed about this. Oh. But I've done nothing. Okay. So you need to set up a folder for those people, do a quick reply to them. Hi, gotcha, we'll let you know whether it's up. Okay. But, that's, but do, do the orders first. You know. All right. And again, please, slow and steady, don't rush. Hi, I'll be quiet. And then it's up to you. If you need actual help at the post office part this afternoon, is anybody else coming like Marcella San or the boys, Most the new boys? Is coming. The other boys are not coming. Today. Okay, then They're Marcella San and I, maybe we can help with the actual post office part of this, mm -hmm. so you know, or the wrapping part of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Anna San. Bye. Okay. I know it sounds like I'm, I'm berating her, but no, I know exactly what's going to happen. On these days after a campaign, there's a ton of mail. You're excited. Look at these orders. i got to talk to all these people. You do one and do another one and do another one. And it's really, really easy to screw. So I just, I'm not riding her, but I've just got to tell her, just please take it easy. Take it easy. So I'm saying one of those orders is mine. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the mailing we did this time round, there wasn't really any specific strong print to feature. If this one had been ready, we could have maybe headlined it, get your order in now for the first batch. But I didn't want to push, I didn't want to push it. I don't want to, add, you know, what's the word? I don't want to promise short and deliver long. So it's okay. This one can wait for next time. Also, I don't want those newsletters to always be selling, selling, selling stuff. I'd like people to get the idea that here's just, here's some news from Dave and his team. And they're not going to think that they're going to be browbeating me to buy stuff all the time. No. So it's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's summertime. Just relax. The news is the news. But if you did find something and place an order, then thank you. It's appreciated. Thank you. Is the print I'm covering part of any series? No. It's an independent print. It's not in our catalog yet. I haven't got a link I can send it to you, send to you. Uh, it's a print that we are preparing, a new Shin Hanga type print designed for us by Jed. It won't be series, it won't be subscriptions, it'll just be a print available to anybody who wants it. And it'll probably, the, the planning now, it's going into final, what we think is final proofing, because it's going really, really well. So today's Monday, so probably by the end of this week, I think this will be uh, photographed, and it'll be decided and photographed, and it'll be in our catalog. And Aimi-san is then going to get busy on make the first, uh, the first batch of these. So just hang on a week or so, and uh, this print will be available. Got something else she wants to show us. <laughs> I was gonna ask you if your avocado is growing really well. Do am I, am I gonna break it? I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Not many, uh, not many leaves yet. I know. I don't know how to do this, but I suggest it. Isn't this now about time when you're supposed to put this into soil or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you if it's okay to bring a flower pot and then put it next to your plants. Absolutely. We have flower pots. There's a ton of flower pots. Ah, you know, you know Sorry. where you are on the third floor, where the window is. Mm -mm -mm. Look at the left hand side, below the gas heater in the corner. There's a ton of flower pots. Ah, there are flower pots there. There's a bunch of uh, potting soil. Do it, do it. But <laughs> if you're asking me how to do it, I can't help you. Uh, that's okay. I know how to do it. She says she knows how to do it. <laughs> 
Thank you. Because this is obviously, this is just going to go up and up and up with no no end. It needs to. Um, yeah, it's strange. Maybe I need to cut some point, you know. Not if you want advice, the avocado. <laughs> this is little. John says, this is what you found in the street outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it's not gross at all. <laughs> Anyway, okay. up, up by the window, the back windows, near the gas heater, there's a bunch of pots in the corner, and there should be a bag of potting soil still there. I don't know, there could be the soil, whatever, just, he's got some nose, whatever. Just, ah, okay, just, thank you. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm not sure if Jed's going to Seattle Comic Con. Jed is in, I believe he's in San Diego. He's hit this one. I'm not sure if he's in, he's in Seattle or not. Jed works with a couple of teams on this. He can't do every weekend because he's got a family. He's got four kids. He can't disappear every weekend to go to conventions. I don't know if the live stream with Dave is the day before the con starts, then I guess he's not going. I don't really know. I'm sorry because he cleared that date with me. He cleared that the date would be okay. Yes, I'm not the person to ask about this. Keep in touch with Jed, with his Instagram, with his website. I'm not the authority here at all. How's our time? Crap, 9.07. Okay, 9.07, a few more minutes. But remember, today's show and tell is a mix this and a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that. What did I do with it? I am sound lady you just saw, you know, she is working out really, really well. I know. We, we hired her on Taran san's recommendation. Taran san had told us that uh, one of the people at his English school was getting uh, disaffected with the work there. She, he said that she felt there was too much stress and uh, she just wanted to get a, a job with less stress. And I asked her what was she like, and he said, I, I forget the exact words, but it's, it's not telling secrets, he would have said the right things. He said she's bright and cheerful. Would have been the, the two words that really, I don't know, made me sit up and take notice. So I asked him, sure, tell her that, I can't promise anything just yet, but tell her to come over and talk to us. But she did, she came over and talked to us. This was during March. Well, she had already given notice at her old employer. And Taransan recommended her really highly. He said, she's a good one, grab her. And I think the same thing. He said, she's bright and, and smart and cheerful. So, uh, so we did, and so far so good. She's turned out very well. She seems to be happy here. Not perfect. All, all new employees in any environment make, uh, make mistakes and stuff. Uh, <laughs> there's been some, some episodes, but it's okay. Whatever, you learn your job, you know. Nothing. No, I can say this without telling any terrible secrets. It doesn't matter. No. She's done very, very, very well. And she's had a good time doing it. So, so, so far, so good. What about the guy the other day? There's two, two young men now who are also on trial with us now. I know you're probably not going to see them. Well, you might see them. They're coming next on Thursday, which is a stream day. So you might, you might see the two guys. I know there was Akasaka-san, Naoki Akasaka, and then uh, uh, Akira. Uh, no, give me, give me a break, Akira. I forget his name. 
they're new. Give me a break. They're new. They're new. We're trying two young men, and they're they're sort of at the moment they're just hanging around the shop. We're talking about prints. We're putting labels on to trans to to practice and stuff, and they're building towards the time when they would be shop assistants here if we do open the shop if and when, and this is a bit of a problem between me and them. They want lots of work. They want to work. These are people who are doing little bits of part-time jobs. They want more work. I don't have enough work for them yet because the door is still closed. But I can't just tell them, go away and wait. Then we open the door because they won't know what to do. So I have to, we've made a deal. They can be here one, sometimes two days a week. We'll pay them, even though they're not actually doing anything as far as customers go. It's training, training, training. And this is, this is how our system is working. And this is the Patreon stuff. We've told those Patreon people, your money is helping us train people during a time when they are not actually productive. And that's what this goes for. Taran San is here, is he? So, Taran San, well, you know about Zori. I'm sure you've talked to Ayana San in the background. Taran San recommended Ayana San to us. She's worked wonderfully, worked out wonderfully. So, Taran San, if you know any more, let me know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I guess we're there, are we? Hi, 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 ringing the bells, ringing the bells. Okay, so much for the work part of today. <laughs> I've really got to get this finished. Now, she's not coming today, so it's going to be my tendency to, so I'll just leave this, I'll get to it tomorrow, and then I won't get to it tomorrow, and she'll come tomorrow, and it won't be finished yet, and, uh, oh. As I said, we have a completely mixed bag for show and tell here today. It's 15 minutes of stuff, and we're just going to look at a few different things. There's going to be no, you can keep your socks on today. We can't do that every day. I've 
lost the stuff I had. What did I do with it already? Look at this. He's lost his show and tell stuff. Oh, there it is. Okay, first up, easy one. I have some of the things that we washed on the last stream. And I have, I have some sort of, I can say it's good news, bad news, actually, about the stuff we did on the last stream. I hadn't really needed to do that. I was just trying to get away from my bench here for a different kind of stream. And I thought, let's go upstairs and do some soaking prints. And what I did was I grabbed a bunch of prints from my drawers upstairs that we had seen in a previous show and tell. I grabbed some prints that I thought, these will be a good candidate for taking off, for doing in the bath. Because, as we talked, we talked about this, but the reason I chose these prints were because it was pretty clear there was a problem with them. They were glued onto backing paper, a poor backing paper, and the prints were mostly okay, and the backing paper was heavily foxed. So I thought this would be a good candidate. Let's put these things in there, get them off their backing, and we will save this batch of prints. Actually, it was pretty much a waste of time. A couple of reasons. One, here's the ones I didn't do yet. Here's the ones we did do. The downside of this is a previous owner, there's been more than one previous owner, a previous owner trimmed these things vigorously. Vigorously and carelessly. A normal Senshafta, when you buy it, it looks pretty much like you see here. There's a natural margin, it's an attractive balance, it's an attractive object. Some previous owner had trimmed them viciously, not even neatly and cleanly. Trimmed them outrageously viciously. Look at this. Had trimmed them to some points, even inside the margins, and then had pasted them down on that awful paper. He'd also numbered them on the back. He'd written different numbers about them. Some of them, they had holes in. We did this in the hot water, and it turned out, and I was thinking, oh my god, I've screwed this up. I've damaged this print. No, they had already been damaged. So my guess is somebody glued them down. Somebody else tried to tear them off the backing sheet, tore a bunch of the prints in the process, and glued them back down onto backing sheet number two. These prints have been abused, and they just aren't worth it. I shouldn't have even bothered. I should have just left them alone. Where's one of the ones that has a hole in it? You saw it the other day when, they, when we were drying them. They just, the game wasn't worth the candle, and I should have just left them alone. They are now in no way attractive objects at all, even though they are off their backing sheets. I mean, I haven't hurt them at all. They are actually safer now than they were before. Look, this one. It was totally torn. There's one of them that has a hole in the middle. It was just, it's a waste of my time for objects that are just worth, you know, a nickel a piece or something. Since you have to come up all the time on auctions, quite often ones in nice conditions, it wasn't worth it for me to spend any time on these at all. Whatever. So be it, so be it, so be it. So I'm just going to leave them in the collection. We've got this other batch of them, the ones I didn't do, I'm just going to leave them. Even though they are dying, even though they're getting foxed, there's no point to making them look like that. So these will just stay together in a bucket at the bottom of our collection. It'll be a long, long, long time before we ever get to the point where we're going to wash them. They're okay, they're nice, they're nice. But what I also did then, and I'm lucky I did that, I filled in by putting in some of our glorious Tokaido prints into the bath at the same time. These are the prints that are glued back in the Meiji time. They were glued to postcards because that was the product. They were selling a postcard that people could put into the post. And the print itself isn't strong enough to go into the post. So they glued up and pasted the prints to some cardboard. And these are worth saving. These are glorious, glorious objects. These are hand-carved, hand-printed Tokaido reproductions of a style that just is stunning. And these were well worth me spending time over the bathtub getting them off this paper. 
So I shouldn't have even fiddled with those St. Shafter prints. I should just have got busy and done a ton more of these because Watanabe san has a ton of these upstairs waiting to get washed. And there's someone, someone's talking about this. There's people all over the world who have one of their postcards in there, you know, their, their stash of letters from a hundred years ago. These were used, they were written with postcards, wish you were here, all that kind of stuff. And they are actually drop dead, gorgeous woodblock prints. I don't know if you can see it on the back, the, the barren, the marks from the barren rubbing are here. Once you get it off the backing sheet, you can see. And these are not metal blocks, these are actual wooden blocks because we've seen close-up photographs of the block set itself, which is preserved down in Kyoto. The company who made these is still in existence, and it's on my list to go down there and talk to them. Putting it in the bath, you know, it doesn't clean everything, it doesn't get all the dirt off. I couldn't sit there and rub and rub and rub the paper. You can't do that under the water because the paper will dissolve. So putting them in that bath softened the glue and it separated them off their backing sheet, but it doesn't specifically clean them. And as we talked about the other day, I'm at some point I gotta do the experiment of putting a print like this into an ultrasonic cleaning bath. I know that the water won't damage it, but when you turn on the ultrasonics, will it shake off soil without shaking off pigment? I don't know. So we've got to get some damaged prints and try that with them. This is a beautiful set. She's got a bunch of these in our flea market. In fact, these the ones you're seeing now, this is not for the collection. These are going into the flea market. You've seen the Tokaido stuff, right? Here we are, crossing the river in the old days. hundred stories in one print, a hundred stories. Look at this. There's a very important man here sitting on his dais, surrounded by his retainers, waiting for his turn to go across. These are all the ladders. The guys use ladders to carry people across the river. And you can see somebody here. I get my, my fingers are too big to point at what's going along here. Here, there's four people one, two, three, four people in the water carrying a ladder with a guy sitting on it. There's another one right behind him there. This guy's sitting on a ladder. And that's what all the gear is. These are all the ladders and the, the attendants waiting for their turn. There's their hut to keep warm. They've probably got a little fireplace or something. And there's a hundred stories here. Look at this horse doesn't want to behave. So much information in these prints. And look at the size of it. That's my finger. <laughs> Just whatever. <laughs> so there's you got it. It's if the customer's butt gets wet, no pay. I don't know how it worked. This a lot of this is documented by historians who know this. I myself I'm not a knowledgeable person about the actual road itself. But yeah. If the guy gets wet, the money would be reduced or something, or if there's an accident and he slips and over you go, maybe you get ride for free. I don't know, I don't know how it worked. <laughs> Another one, very important man crossing here. This is a VP, VIP carrier. That would cost him. We've talked about this before, I don't wanna do the same thing all the time. It's two guys here, it looks like some people working out sumo. They're not doing sumo, these two guys. They are crouching down so that their customer can climb onto their shoulders. Anyway, enough, 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 enough. Okay, so that group, they came off very nice. This is the group that you saw in the hot water. They came off the back, but it doesn't clean the soiling. Can't be helped, can't be helped. So that's a recap. The people who can't believe that these things can go into water, they can indeed. But again, if you don't know what you're doing, please don't try this at home. Someone's asking, how old are these? These date from uh, 1906. Uh, 
Yeah, 1906, this set of prints. And we have a set of them in the flea market as we speak. Okay, moving along, moving along, moving along. You saw it the other day, the beautiful, beautiful prints that we got from Takamizawa of the Omi Hakke series. Shortly after that auction, another auction came up for some more prints. Look at this, another group of prints from the Omi Hakke. I looked at this, it was a group of, I think there was 27 prints in the group, and I looked at them carefully, and I saw something very, very interesting. The guy had them on the auction as ukiyo-e prints, woodblock prints, mokuhanga, reproductions. He knew they weren't Hiroshige originals, but he had them listed as woodblock prints. I looked at them, and I can see the color. Look at the back. What do you think? Woodblock prints, how much would you bid for these? There was a whole stack of them. There was, I think, 27 of them in one group, and he had another group with another few dozens. And there is something on here that tells you what's going on. Well, so there's three or four things. One is the colors are weird, as Vivid Sad is thinking. Is this a woodblock print? There's something else that tells you the answer right away. We have tombo. These are registration marks, not the kind of registration mark we use in our own work, a corner where the paper goes in. These are registration marks of the type you see on a printing press. These are press prints. These are early types of offset prints. And this one is the same thing. The registration marks have been trimmed off, but this is actually an offset print. I want you to get close. You can see now. Look, you don't even need me. You can see there's something wrong with this gradation. And if we get our little magnifying glass out here, this thing, we can see, yes, there is a halftone screen. Can we actually see it here? Let me see. Can I get this through to you guys? There it is, look, you can see. There it is, there's a half-tone screen. Now you can't see this on your JPEG images at an auction, but once you get it under your, under your microscope here, you can see a half-tone screen. It's fun, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. I have no interest in this thing as a, as a, as, you know, as this. It's, it's printed mechanically. When I say a halftone screen, what I mean is they, they have taken original prints, they have photographed it a few different color filters. I can't explain how halftone printing works. It's an early form of offset printing. It's offset lithography, and the master copies have been made by using halftones. It's standard printing. This would have been early 1900s, maybe late 1800s. And once they got this good at this, you can see then why it's the end of the line for the traditional guys, because this is really fast, of course. And they've done a nice job on this. I, mean, I don't like it, but they have done a nice job. Very fine lines. Reasonable registration, reasonable colors. This is cool. If I was in 1905, so there you are. So if you're buying stuff on Yahoo Auction, you got to play it. You know, you got to be careful. There are things on there that the people will describe as being woodblock prints, and maybe they are lying to you. Maybe they just don't know, or maybe they are thinking, well, it looks like a woodblock print. And lots of these guys put, and this is sort of a standard thing in many Yahoo Auctions, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a print dealer, so please look at the pictures carefully and bid in accordance with your thoughts on this. And that sort of lets them off the hook about what this is. This one's done very nicely. This one is something that I would not cross the street to pick up. <laughs> but I did buy them. I wanted to show what Nabisan, what's going on here. I wanted our staff to see how these things work. And you know, I'm going to put, she's actually going to put some of these in the flea market. And what I told her to do was it might be a good idea to pair these. We don't have the original woodblock versions at the same time. But it might be a good idea, when you've got a couple of flea market items selling together, 
tell them as a little bonus I'll put in one of the Meiji era offset printed items so that you can see how they work so something like this so whatever they are of interest you know they are of interest and this particular group is quite nicely made believe me there are some horrors uh, no it's not CMYK it's there's spot color on here as well I don't really know I can't give you chapter and verse here no it's spot color and some of the spot color is also screen half tone so this is a real uh, a bastardization the green here is not screened it's a spot color the blue is screened because it's a gradation and it may be that's the way they've done this anything where they needed a gradation they have screened it and anything that doesn't need a gradation they've printed it with spot color so this may have actually been 10 or 12 printings you know not the four cmyk that you could do that light blue is spot the dark green is spot color the gray behind it nope that's screened it's a mix it's a real 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 mix okay there you have it all right today is Monday we are out of time I am going to try and discipline myself to finish this blog now so that Aimee san can get to it that means that my next work on Thursday is supposed to be my next carving project and a bunch of you know what that actually is so hopefully I will be up and running next Thursday with the carving project after that not the following weekend but the weekend after that I will be in Ome and we will have another river stream that's going to be about 10 days from now it's going to be one of the Saturday streams for me Friday for you not the next one coming up but the one after that will be an Ome river stream because I'm going out to Ome to get my fourth vaccination got to get my booster shot that'll be about 10 10 or 11 days from now we're gonna have another stream stream yes yeah sorry to prince yes thank you for reminding me okay what's this guy I don't recognize this guy is this a who's this delivering oysters no idea It's refrigerated, I guess. Tourists, it looks like an actual tour group. Look at this. Australians, maybe, going by the hat? Not sure. Tourists in a group, I didn't see. Did they have a leader? I don't know. Oysters, I guess. <laughs> okay, anyway, I do have to get to work. I'm out of here. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you three more days. Thursday for me, Wednesday for you. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, and please keep hydrated, right? Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>